What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today's video on Zach Cunningham was another highly requested one and shoutouts will be at the outro of the video. I really appreciate y'all's support, like talking to y'all in the comments, and want to input your ideas. So if you want to recommend someone for a video, comment down below, and if there's enough demand, I promise I will get to it. So Cunningham has been an absolute beast for us, and his last season he put up a ridiculous 142 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, and 2 pass breakups. In my opinion, he's grown into the best linebacker in the AFC, and I've got the film to back it up. He's an elite athlete for the position, and his sideline to sideline speed is ridiculous. He's gotten really good at dealing with blocks and putting himself in a good position to make a tackle. His instincts are on another level which helps him sniff out plays, but he's also disciplined in just doing his job. The major thing with Cunningham is his coverage and what I'll show you is he's actually very good in zone coverage, it's just man coverage where he can struggle. But I believe I found a fix. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now let's get into the film because the film don't lie. So the first thing that makes Zach so special is his elite athleticism, and that translates to really good sideline to sideline range. And so on this play, the Patriots are running to the right off the right tackle, and the running back can cut it inside or outside based off the leverage, and Zach Cunningham is the one who's going to end up chasing down this cutback. And so you can see here that his sideline to sideline speed is ridiculous, coming from that weak side linebacker spot, and it's just such a big help to the defense, because at this point, during the cutback, you can see that the running back, he has a good lane. If Zach Cunningham's a step slower, he has a good lane because these two guys on the right are being blocked and he can get to that second level easily. But luckily, Zach's fast enough that he can stop that run for a minimal gain. Here's another great example of Zach making a tackle that not many linebackers in the NFL can make. I mean, this is ridiculous speed. And if you look at the Colts play design, what's interesting to me is that the running back is lined up to the left. And so out of a shotgun formation, you would assume that a run is going to be going to the right, unless it is a counter to the left but your first instincts would be that it is to the right. However, Zach reads this the entire way. His instincts are on point. He knows that this is actually going to the left and he doesn't ever even hesitates when he starts to run on this play. And the reason for that is because he's reading his keys of the offensive lineman really well and really quickly. As you can see, once the ball is snapped, the offensive linemen, they all take steps to their left. So if it was a run to the right, they would obviously all be taking their first steps to the right, but it's not. And Zach Cunningham reads that so quickly. He processes it so quickly. And that's a big part of linebacker play. Mental processing, reading what the offense is showing you, because that's going to help you be able to react to the play as quickly as possible. And so you can see here that Zach just instantly goes with it. He's, he knows that the run is going to the left because of the offensive lineman's movement. And so he tracks it down. He gets through that gap. And at this point, look, the running back has a good lane here. He could break this for a huge gain. But because of Zach's athleticism and his range, the sideline to sideline speed that is so ridiculous, he's able to chase it down. And this is such a crazy tackle. Like I said, not many linebackers in the entire NFL can make this, but he prevents a huge play from happening. Cunningham's speed helps him recover even when he makes mistakes, like on this play where he chooses the wrong gap, but then he's still fast enough to recover and hold it to a minimal gain. So as you can see here, Cunningham is reading the center because of how we have a nose tackle lined up head over him who's going to be two gapping. And so whichever way the center is leveraged and takes his first movement off the snap, that's where Cunningham is responsible for. He has to mirror his movement and be able to read and react as to what happens next. And so as you can see here that the center, he moves to the right. And so Cunningham follows him and he thinks that's where the run is going to go. But the Jaguars are actually pulling a guard to the left. And so it's kind of a misdirection here. And Cunningham falls for it at first, and you can see him run into that gap because that's where he thinks he should be. But he should actually get over to the left because that's where the run is going instead. And luckily, he's fast enough to still explode off that foot, cut back to the left, and get in position to make this tackle on Leonard Fournette and reduce the gain to only 4 yards. Another example here where Cunningham, he takes a false step, but then his range to the sideline, like look here, it doesn't even look like he's trying to run, but he chases down the running back and still gets in on the tackle. And when we look at it from the end zone angle, you can see that he'll, he's reading the handoff and he takes a step back because he thinks it's a play action pass. But then once he reads that it's a run, he hauls ass, gets to the sideline and makes a good tackle. His speed is scary, especially if he's coming in unblocked like on this play where he beats Josh Jacobs to the line of scrimmage and gets this tackle for loss. This is such a nice play out of Cunningham. His elite athleticism is crazy. And it even helps him in the passing game where he sniffs out this screen and gets all the way to the sideline to shut it down. I mean, his speed here is just absolutely ridiculous. You can see he goes from the middle of the field on the hash marks and he just flies with this running back and shuts that down. 
So a lot of those plays came when Cunningham was unblocked, but make no mistake, he's become really good at dealing with blocks. He can either just evade the block entirely or shed it and just be super physical. And the first thing I'm going to show you is his elite ability to evade blocks. So you all probably remember this play against the Bills and they look great. They had got three Bills defenders out here in, in space to block just two Texans defenders. And if that happens, Josh Allen takes us for a first. He's in field goal range. The Bills win this game, and Deshaun never has a chance to make his magic. But Cunningham is having none of that. Look at how he just completely makes this tight end whiff on his block. And so the other two aren't focused on him because they've got to get up to other guys. They can tr they're trusting in that tight end to make that block, but Cunningham just completely evades it. He makes a miss, and then he gets the clean tackle on Josh Allen. And this next play is a really good example of how important this can be because you can see that the right guard and right tackle are working a double team here and the right guard's going to try and get to the second level and block Zach Cunningham but he's having none of it and he's going to swim over that so quickly and just completely shut down this run. His swim move is actually a really nice move. He kind of looks like a pass rusher doing it to be honest. Look how he just swims over the center Ryan Kelly there just embarrassing him. You can't block him like that. He's too elusive and that kind of goes to his athleticism as well. The agility and elusive this to be able to pull off a move like that like it's crazy and so i'm kind of just going to run through a bunch of these examples where he just completely evades these blocks when they're trying to get to him this, to the second level and this is so important because run games great run games they really do target the second level if you can block the second level then obviously you're just making your, the job easier for running backs so conversely if you can avoid these second level blocks as a linebacker and just never have to deal with them like it's just amazing like Zach Cunningham just blows up run plays all the time because of this. And what this does is it makes defensive tackles jobs easier too, because on this play you can see that Brandon Dunn's dealing with the double team here by the center and the right guard, and he doesn't hold it the best. He honestly gets moved out of the way, and he allows the center to make it to the next level to block Cunningham. However, Cunningham's so good at dealing with blocks, he sheds this one completely. He's so physical, he gets low, boom, and then he's able to shut down the running back's run lane. His ability to take on contact, not back down, but actually take it on and beat it is just so great to see. He uses his swim move here yet again to get off the center's block and make a nice tackle. I love his physicality and it's something that's improved a lot over his career. His ability to take on these blocks is of a true Mike. I mean, this physicality doesn't come from a lot of weak side linebackers. But because we play such a versatile scheme where he plays 3-4 Mike, 4-3 Will, even a 4-3 Mike as well, he's going to have to be doing these and taking on a lot of blocks because it's just bound to happen. Players are going to get to the second level and get in his face and he can't back down from that physicality and he never does, which is I love to see. And the narrative from the media, honestly, and even from Houston media, is that you know he's a weak side linebacker he can't deal with blocks well that's what i was like told you know that's the narrative that shaped my mind and my idea of cunningham over this past season and it was a worry of mine to be completely honest because that's what i was told i hadn't actually seen the film yet and the film don't lie you can see on the film that he's dealing with these blocks so nice, so physically. He's, he's physical, guys. He punches them first. He takes on contact first, whether it's a fullback or a tight end or an offensive lineman. He's creating the contact. He's taking it to them. He's never backing down and wins more often than not. And so my point here is that you can't really trust the mainstream media because they don't watch film like this. They're supposed to be the experts, but you got to trust your own eyes when you're watching the film or trust me when I tell you about this and show you about it on the film. Now the next thing I want to talk about with Zach is his instincts and discipline. He's got really great instincts to sniff out plays and completely destroy them before they even have a chance of working. And one example of that is here on a screen where the Chargers they're going to have this wide receiver in motion and then they're also going to have a play action fake to the running back. So they've got a lot of misdirection going on here, but the actual play is a screen to the left. And so you're going to have these offensive linemen try and get out in space and block to the left, but Zach sniffs it out completely. He stays with the fake and he doesn't leave it. A lot of the times when you see that the play action fake doesn't go to the running back, the linebacker may leave them and go try and guard someone else, but he sticks with his job. That's his job to contain that side and he sniffs it out. He sees that something's fishy. He sees that there's not an actual pass play going on and he sticks with it and then his break on the ball to come downhill that quickly and make a tackle to stop the play. That's just amazing to see. Misdirection just doesn't fool Zach Cunningham. He's always going to be able to sniff out where the play is going and his high IQ and it must be film study, but also just instincts to know where the play is going. I mean, if we look at this one from the end zone view here, we can see that they have a guy in motion. They're going to give this to Alvin Kamara, but then they also have the play action fake to Latavius Murray, the running back. And Cunningham just reads it so quickly. You can see here at 
at this point where he sees he's already starting to go to the left before Drew Brees has even finished the handoff to Latavius Murray. And so he chases it down using his sideline to sideline speed. And you can see here that the cornerback, he helps him, but Cunningham's already cut off this angle. So he's gotten to Kamara and he would have made that tackle regardless. With modern offenses nowadays, they use so much motion, but Cunningham is never fooled. And that's a necessary ability for a linebacker who, as you can see on this play, literally guards sideline to sideline. His ability to outsmart the offense and out execute getting away from that block and getting, then getting out to the sideline like this it's just a true weapon there's plays like these where he just looks ahead of the offense and he gets to their spot before that they're able to i mean he gets outside here before fournette can and that just completely stuffs this entire play now he also combines this with his good ability to deal with blocks as he sheds this block right here boom just get by that wide receiver you can't put a wide receiver on him and not expect him to blow up the play and so having quick instincts like that and beating offenses to their spot by being aggressive is great, but also having discipline and patience is a big part of linebacker play reading the offense in front of you as well as your defensive lineman and what i mean by this can be easily seen on this play and zach cunningham's chemistry with brandon dunn the nose tackle right here so dunn is taking on the center and he's two gapping which is what we ask a lot of our interior defensive linemen to do and what two gapping means is that you're responsible for both gaps two gaps so that would be your right and your left gap now in terms of a linebacker, Cunningham's job is more complicated when we run this two gap system because he too has to account for both gaps. He has to see how Brandon Dunn, the center, and the running back are all leveraged based on the play and then pick the appropriate lane to hit and fill. And you can see it with how Brandon Dunn and him react to each other. So at first, the center goes a little bit to the right and so Cunningham follows that. Then as Dunn keeps working this block, you can see at this point his head is around to the left and Cunningham therefore goes around to the right so that they've got both sides covered. Then they end up flipping positions where Dunn is to the right, but the running back is going to the left, but that's okay because Cunningham reads it and goes to the left as well and shuts it down. He's really good at doing this and being consistent with it, just being patient and disciplined and not flying into someone else's gap and just doing his job. If you look on this play, he's got so many opportunities to fly downhill. At this point, he could try and shoot that gap, but that's not his job. Then, in another point, he can try and shoot this gap, that's again not his job, or he can go all the way outside, but Merciless has that. But he's going to end up hopping around like Le'Veon Bell in the backfield, just patient and waiting for McCaffrey to come to him, and he makes the nice tackle. One more example here, just because the more proof, the better. He's just so good at being patient like this and not making any mistakes. Now, my last strength I'm going to talk about for Cunningham is actually his zone coverage. Now I know his reputation is to be a pretty bad coverage linebacker, and we'll get to his man coverage, but his zone coverage in particular is great. Now, but don't take my word for it, let me show you with the film. And so here they're going to be in cover 4, where Zach Cunningham is responsible for the middle of the field in this hook zone. And this tight end is going to run a little curl route and try and get in there and get a catch. And Matt Ryan's going to throw it to him right now, but Zach Cunningham's really quick to plant on his back foot, explode forward, and get this pass breakup. Now on this play, the Texans are going to be in a bit of a cover six blitz. It's cover six because you can see the two top defenders, they're in their own quarter zones. And then this guy at the bottom here, Roby, he's going to be responsible for half the field. And then you're going to have that safety here who's creeping down. He's going to be on the blitz. But the main part of this that we're going to be looking at is Zach Cunningham and how he's in this hook zone. Now the Jaguars, they're in a good scheme to beat this coverage because you're going to see that this post curl route combination right here, it's designed to put Cunningham into a conflict of assignment. Because if he tries to guard this curl route underneath, then the post is going to hit him over top. But if he tries to go get too much depth for the post, then the curl should be open underneath. So you can see how he really has to make a decision here and he makes the right decision of gaining depth and allowing someone else to pick up the, in the shorter route. So you can see that he flips his hips here like a cornerback it looks like and just does a really good job to take away this post route. Minshew can't even look at it. He knows that it's not going to be covered because of how great Cunningham did in getting depth and taking that away completely. And so he's forced into taking the check down to the running back. This is just great, great coverage out of that Cunningham. It's one thing to be able to stick in your hook zone and kind of just stop a, a tight end like on the previous play. But I think this is even better. Even though he doesn't get a pass breakup here, he doesn't even get targeted. He shuts this down, which it could have been a, a touchdown because if you look at how the post was being run, there's a gap there. There's a gap right in between, right past the linebackers and before the safety where they could have had a touchdown for sure. But Zach Cunningham with his size, his athleticism, he's able to sniff that out and shut it down. The main issue most linebackers have in coverage is getting beaten over top. 
but Cunningham is just so good at getting depth and then reading the receivers around him and being able to attack quickly and take away throws. He does a really good job of reading Philip Rivers' eyes right here. You can see as the ball is snapped and he takes back in his drop, he looks goes right at first, then as Philip Rivers looks left, boom, he goes left as well. And if that throw was on target, he would have broken it up. So this is some next level coverage by Cunningham. The Texans are in a Tampa 2, and the Jaguars have dialed up a good concept to put Cunningham in a conflict of assignment. They have this shallow crossing route and then this deep dig behind to directly try and attack Cunningham, but he's having none of it. And at first you can see that he comes downhill to stop the shallow crossing route, but he realizes that there's going to be more to it. And so then he backs up and takes away that dig behind him. You can see how they was going to be coming into open space, but Cunningham cuts it off by getting good depth. And then so they're forced to take the check down underneath. So I've got more examples of great zone coverage, but I'm going to go through them a bit quicker just so that this video isn't like 20 minutes long. On these ones, it's just more of Zach having great awareness and getting really good depth. He's able to carry his zone so far here, following the tight end up the seam, and look, it's a completely covered throw even if it was accurate. Now on this one in an underneath hook zone, he just reads Matt Ryan's eyes really quickly, breaks on the ball, and is able to help break up this slant with J. Joe on Julio Jones. You can really see it nicely from this end zone angle, how as soon as he sees Matt Ryan looking to the right there, he just boom, he's going, and then he helps break it up at the catch point. Now another great one here where... At this point, it looks like Julio Jones is going to come open on the post, but Cunningham gets back, gets good depth yet again, and helps out, forcing the scramble. Now one more here where he stops the post. I mean, just this is crazy depth for a linebacker to get. He moves so quickly, his athleticism really helps him here, and it's just such an amazing thing to see in zone coverage. Now, no player is perfect, and Cunningham's coverage is definitely far from perfect. I showed how his zone coverage was great. And as good as his own coverage is, his man coverage is pretty much just as bad. And so you can see here that one big thing, one big flaw is that he comes downhill too aggressively and then he out leverages himself. He's going to the outside already here. So of course, Kamara is going to take it inside. And it's just those split steps, those small steps that make all the difference. Same thing here against the Chiefs and man coverage with the running back. And he's just, he's just way too aggressive on these. He comes downhill too much. He gets too jumpy and excited and boom, he just, he lets the running back go right by him because he's too aggressive in going downhill. There's no reason going downhill that quickly. You can see here at this point that look, his, he exposed his outside foot as his top foot. And so they're going to out leverage you and then attack the other way. And that's exactly what happens here. And that's exactly how he gets beat. Now, the thing about that is... He's shown good ability to give himself enough space and not be that aggressive. Like on this one here where he's given enough space, look at that, to where when the running back breaks inside, he can chase and cover that and use his elite speed to, because he's in a good position, so then it's not that big of a deal. And on these ones where he stays square at the top of the route, then he has a nice good pass breakups in main coverage. You know what I mean? Like as long as he can stay square, not out leverage at the top of the route where he puts himself in a good position, he has the athleticism to break on the ball quickly and break it up and be good in main coverage if he wants. Now, another thing that pissed me off was how they put him in a bad position. He's at the A gap here and has to cover McCaffrey out in the flat. That's just so much distance to cover. It's not fair. Of course, he's not going to be able to make it out there. And then when he does, he's running so hard to catch up that he misses the tackle when he cuts it back inside. And here's another example where he's in such far off coverage that when the running back is trying to run this shallow cross, he has to covers so much ground because of the angle he has to take that diagonal angle so it's just so much harder for him so of course he's not gonna be able to catch up there it's crazy that he even gets back into this play with his elite speed but that's just not fair so putting Cunningham into a better position in man coverage that's gonna help hide a lot of his flaws and then also him just being a little less aggressive staying square at the top of the route it's gonna help him in man coverage big time all right, that'll do it for my Zach Cunningham film breakdown. I hope you all see the monster that Zach has become and agree with me that he's the best linebacker in the AFC. I know he's got some big competition, but I just really believe in him, man. I'm excited to see more from him and hopefully his entire career is in Houston. So as I mentioned earlier, this was a highly requested video and shout out to Caleb Garcia, twice I actually appreciate you. Also Joe Tato, Shiver Buzz, and Manel Ponte, excuse me if I pronounced that incorrectly. I really appreciate y'all's support, and if you want to recommend someone for a video, comment down below. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. The question of the day will be, do you think Cunningham will go down as the greatest Texans linebacker in history? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered, and we are grinding to put out the best Texans content and coverage for y'all. 
I would really appreciate it if you could check out the links in the description to our website and podcast. We've got a ton of great stuff for you guys. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Texans underscore thoughts for more film breakdowns, live game tweets, and really anything Texans related. All right, this was Jordan or Texans thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Take care, everyone.